From the Vietnam War to Operation Iraqi Freedom, the B-52 continues to serve. Ironically, a 1991 peace treaty nearly ground the bomber for good. They strike fighters. Flying round trip from Barksdale, Louisiana to Iraq, B-52Gs traveled more than 14,000 miles nonstop for 35 hours, at the time, the longest combat mission in history. Following these missile strikes came conventional bomb attacks by B-52 units based in Europe and off the coast of Sri Lanka. Though the Air Force used precision-guided bombs for many targets, it relied on the massive payload of the B-52s to take out heavy targets, such as the sprawling chemical plant at El Qaim. As a defensive tactic, the B-52s typically flew in groups of three called a cell. Early in the war, missions were flown at night and at low altitude. Once the Iraqi Air Force was destroyed, high altitude missions became possible. During Desert Storm, B-52Gs dropped more than 30% of the bombs delivered, yet it was the last combat mission of this model. Historically, our primary mission has been nuclear deterrence, and that's where a lot of our training has uh, been to have the capability to perform that mission if necessary. However, with the changing world conditions, the B-52 is moving more towards uh, the uh, conventional arena where we can uh, be used to uh, diffuse world tensions uh, as needed uh, at, uh, at any level of conventional conflict. Soon after Desert Storm, the United States and Russia signed the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, a seeming death sentence for the venerable B-52. Virtually all active B-52s were ordered destroyed. Only the latest model, the B-52H, survived. The older models flew their final missions to Davis-Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. On a field known as the Boneyard, the once proud bombers were stripped of all usable parts, then unceremoniously demolished by a 13,000 pound steel blade. The mammoth guillotine crashed down four times on each plane, severing the enormous wings and slicing the fuselage into three pieces. There the fragments remained for three months, while Russian satellites confirmed they had been destroyed. In 1992, following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Strategic Air Command was absorbed into the Air Force's Air Combat Command. In 1996, under this new command, B-52H models flew their first combat sorties in Operation Desert Strike in Iraq. There, two B-52Hs completed a 34-hour, 16,000-mile round trip from Guam to Iraq breaking the record set by B-52Gs only five years earlier. In 2002, the fate of the B-52 changed once again. In a report called the Nuclear Posture Review, the Defense Department established a new triad. As part of this strategy, nuclear-armed B-52s will rejoin ICBMs and Trident nuclear subs to form the first changes. Another advanced conventional weapon it uses is the Joint Standoff Weapon, or JSAW. Entering service in 2003, it was deployed by B-52s during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Today, 94 B-52s remain in service, and the Air Force plans to keep the fleet operational through 2040. Though the new triad renews the B-52's role to deliver nuclear weapons, the Stratofortress continues to prove itself a valuable conventional bomber. Most recently during Operation Iraqi Freedom, where more than 100 missions were flown. Across the decades, the definition of strategic air power has evolved. 
Yet one factor has remained critical to U.S. air combat throughout the years, the B-52 Stratofortress. From the Cold War to the war on terrorism and beyond,